Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Christy McLean, and I wanted to take this time to share with you a few of the takeaways that I gained from reading Jonathan Kozel's Savage Inequalities book. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do is just give you a brief summary of the book and just let you know that the book is about a description of several urban um, non-white school districts and the stark inequities that exist between them and neighboring suburban school districts who had a wealth of resources and staffing and overall safety that was not present in the urban school districts. The first takeaway I gained uh, when I read this book is that many, many children who are attending urban schools in the United States are truly attending schools that are extremely deficient, inequitable in funding and resources and teacher quality and staffing as well as safety. Uh, I also thought prior to reading this book um, that this reality was not as stark as it is, but it is stark and it is a growing matter in the United States today, one that is continuing to persist. Many children today um, that are in urban school districts that are primarily black and brown and impoverished um, are riddled with outdated buildings, uh, outdated textbooks, um, poorly funded schools, uh, poorly qualified teachers, and this is a very sad reality when you look at it 25 years later that we're still dealing with the same matters. Uh, Dr. Daniel Katz, he's an American psychologist, uh, revisited the progress of the country um, regarding the book Savage Inequalities um, in 2016, and he notes that despite the tremendous increase in wealth and technology in America, that the inequities of public education still remain. Author Samuel Ngozi um, note that current politicians, such as those like Betsy DeVos, although they agree that there is a similar reality, they don't agree that additional funding is needed for those public schools for families. Rather, their suggestion is for privatizing schools and utilizing public funding for urban families to be able to make choice and attend uh, schools of their choice to have better educational opportunities. Although these are solutions, these aren't solutions that will repair the current reality of many failing urban public schools that don't have adequate funding, resources, or teacher preparation to educate these children. It's in my opinion that the stories of this book really illustrate the gaping differences that still exist economically uh, between privileged, mostly white students who reside in wealthy suburban areas as compared to their peers who reside in mostly non-white, uh, crowded urban areas with no economic privilege. It also highlights the severity of this problem um, more than a quarter century, century later and how this problem has persisted. I do agree with Dr. Koval that if this was not a matter of importance, then why not just um, eliminate all the funding uh, for those schools so that um, those children can have the same advantages that those in suburban areas do. Of course, this is not a solution that many of the politicians and educators and uh, parents of those local communities have decided to do. So the matter stands as is. I believe the leaders of our community are ignoring a significant problem that will bring irreparable damage to our children and the future of our country if it's not addressed. Instead of creating schools that are engines of opportunity and democracy, as Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado stated, um, we are creating schools of failure and um, poverty. Savage inequalities do still exist and they are growing at a significant rate. And it requires the courage of passionate, skilled educators, as well as their communities and politicians who come together to provide the resources that these students need for their success. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for listening.